And they said earlier, my name is Steve, and I'm an alcoholic. And uh, I previously served as uh, area archivist for uh, North Florida Area 14. Um, and I've also been a past district archivist for District 13. Uh, I currently serve as a DCM for my district, uh, District 13. And I want to thank uh, the committee for asking me to come up here and participate in this. I'm, I'm always happy to and uh, energetic and ready to uh, serve in any way possible and be all we want to be is a part of, right? Uh, I, had, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, kind of do the same thing at, um, at the International. And uh, after it was over, we had three speakers. Two of them are here today. Uh, there were certain uh, specifics, and when I got done, uh, somebody came over to me and said he thought I talked a little bit too much. So that's why I want to make sure that our uh, three panel members got to go first. <laughs> <laughs> the last portion of this is, is, and Gail talked about it earlier, is you know, how do we, we don't talk enough about the traditions and how we equate them to archives. And I will tell you, I came a long way. When I got elected as archivist for my area, it was, I knew about collecting, and I loved history, and I knew about stuff. And I had no idea, just like when I first came to Alcoholics Anonymous, I had no idea what Alcoholics Anonymous was all about. I had no idea what, art, what an archivist was really all about. And I found out very quickly when I attended my first National AA Archives workshop in, uh, in Macon. And, uh, this is my sixth one now. And it's uh, people like Bob and Barron and Gail and Don and that, you know, and teach me about ethics and the core values and, and what's really important in archives. And so in getting into uh, the traditions, uh, what, I've done, what I've done here is I've tried to integrate some questions uh, into each uh, tradition. Uh, some of the things that just came to my mind, uh, it's said that uh, the traditions are what, you know, it's a spiritual glue that they hold out the Holy Synonymous together. And hopefully that's the spiritual glue that holds us together as archivists in our work. Uh, I'm going to try to go through this quickly. I want to, want to find out real quick uh, how many people have questions already? All right, then I'll slow down a little bit. <laughs> so, tradition one, AA's 12 tradition repeatedly asked us to give up personal desires for the common good. You know, I always got to check my ego at the door here. Tradition one is all about unity. Our common welfare should come first. Personal unit, personal recovery depends upon AA unity. I love the cartoon edition here because, it, you know, I'm a visual person, so I really, I understand this, you know. The group is pulling this guy out of the water. But really, when I looked at it and really wanted to know what the meat and potatoes of the traditions were all about, I always had to look at the long form. And it says that each member of Alcoholics Anonymous is but a small part of the great whole. A must continue to live, or most of us will surely die. Hence, our common welfare comes first. But our individual welfare follows closely afterwards. And you know, when I read when I read that, that really kind of that really kind of really Explains the whole tradition to me. And uh, another another cartoon I love here. You, got, you always got one guy in your home group here, and uh, this guy, everybody's sitting on the branch, and he's gonna he's gonna saw them all off. So he thinks that's what's that's what's best, I guess. But here's one of the questions that I came up here, and it's is there unity in your archival work? Tradition two is all about group conscience, and uh, this happens to me all the time. Uh, this particular gentleman over here is now he's elected secretary. He's going to show him some real leadership. And fellowship in my district are always going down, boy, down, boy. So the question I came up with here is: Is your archival work guided by group conscience, or are you a committee of one? And I don't know about you, but like in my district. Uh, I would set up committee meetings, and sometimes I would be the only one that showed up. Uh, but I always found that it's better to be, to better work through a group conscious than look for one person and making the decisions from everybody. And so, 
uh, I would constantly bring reports to my district or my area on what was going on and try to get their input. Tradition three, the only requirement for membership is desire to stop drinking. And of course, it's all about membership. But again, in the long form of the third tradition, it talks about our membership ought to include all who suffer from alcoholism. Hence, we may refuse none who wish to recover, nor on any membership ever depend upon money or conformity. Any two or three alcoholics gathered together for sobriety may call themselves an AA group, provided it is a group that they have no other affiliation. And so I thought about it and I thought, is your archival work open to all AA members in your community that want to participate in this service? Tradition four is about autonomy. And each group should be autonomous except in matters affecting other groups or AA as a whole. And I love this one right down here about the Rosebud group. Free beer at your first meeting. Is your archival work guided by spiritual principles? And I, I, I really had to think about that. I mean, uh, is, it, is it really guided by spiritual principles? Or am I just trying to, am I just trying to uh, show off, to show, show what stuff I got and what I know? Tradition five is primary purpose. Each group has their own primary purpose to carry its message to the alcoholic that still suffers. And for Don, this is the this is the guy who's got the key to willingness. So, what is the primary purpose of our of your archival work? Is there a mission statement? What is your scope? Do you have do you have a collection policy? And do you have a deaccession policy? So, when I was a uh, archivist for the North Florida area. Uh, I picked up this, the archive storage from our previous, from our predecessor. And we keep it in controlled environment. We don't have a repository. So I took all the archives and I brought them to the new facility close to my house where I could, where I could uh, do the work. And uh, we had some old tapes. And the previous archivist looked at me and she said, well, those tables are old. You can just throw them out. No, you can't throw them out. We don't have a deaccession policy. As I started to look, we didn't have a mission statement. We didn't have a scope, and we didn't have a we didn't have a collection policy at all. The only thing we had in place is that we we collected uh, stuff from the North Florida area, and we kept the records and everything. But it was becoming very apparent to me that we were like. The thrift shop, give us your poor, you're tired, you're hungry, whatever you brought us, we cook it, whether it fit our area or not. And so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to be honest right now. I started looking around. I looked in the, uh, I looked in the, uh, uh, the, the workbook that Gail just kept on talking about, the GSO workbook, and they had some stuff in there. And then I started looking around online, and I saw one in Michigan. Uh, that had a collection policy, and uh, I started to uh, I started to uh, draft a template for the North Florida area based on that one because I was very impressed at the way that one was. And I believe now I didn't know at that time that that was the collection policy in Fahrenheit, I believe. So once I got this written, I uh, took it before my area and. Uh, I, uh, we posted it and uh, we got it. We got it passed, and now, now we have a collection policy. Now, now the North Florida area knows what they collect. They know what our policy is, and they also know we have the accession policy in there. And now I can get rid of those old tables. So tradition six is about non-affiliation. And it says, uh, an AA group ought never endorse, finance, or lend the AA name to any related facility or outside enterprise, lest problems of money, property, and prestige divert us from our primary purpose. And in the long form, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but right here it says, 
The problems of money, property, and authority may easily divert us from our primary spiritual aim. And I believe it's been talked about here earlier that uh, you know, it's sometimes we have we have people that mix their personal stuff in with their uh, uh, with their area or their district. Guilty. And when I was district archivist, we had a very small district display, and we have a thing called community meeting that our inner group puts on once a month, where a group, one group in the area hosts it. And so the archives would always set up, and I have to admit, I slid some extra stuff in there to make the presentation look good. Right. Or so I thought it would. But here, we think, therefore, that any considerable property of genuine use to AA should be separately incorporated in man, just dividing the material from the spiritual. And uh, that was obviously something that I didn't understand when I did that. But uh, I used the... Uh, I use these two right here because these are obviously two places, Dr. Bob's house and Stepping Stones, that are very dear to us in Alcoholics Anonymous, but yet they have private foundations outside here, not Alcoholics Anonymous, just like, just like clubs, just like our, our AA golf teams. Uh, these are all private things. Run by AA is for AA. So the questions I came up with for this tradition was, is our AA archive dependent on material, such as books and memorabilia, to tell our story? Or do we take, take care to preserve our local intergroup, district, and area documents? Do we take the time to document our local group and personal stories? And I believe that's been talked about. Do we mix our personal materials with our elected or appointed AA archives and inventories? And like I just explained, guilty once. Tradition 7 is about self-support. Every AA group ought to be fully self-supporting. I love this one right here uh, because when I came into Alcoholics Anonymous, it taught me about how to be responsible and pay my bills. I have the long form of the tradition at the bottom that says experience is often warned us that nothing can so surely destroy our spiritual heritage as field disputes over property, money, and authority. And I believe that was talked about just a little while ago. Uh, we stuck a big, somebody stuck a big book in that in the archive, and they went to retrieve it, and they thought they were stealing. So the question I came up with here is, uh, do we make sure to get a signed or notarized deed of gift when receiving donations from our members? I think that's very, very important. Uh, it's been talked about a lot. Sometimes even deceased members, things are passed along, and Families find out what a value, what a value a particular item is, and they want it back. And uh, this is where the uh, material and the, uh, the spiritual kind of hit can along. But if, if something is donated to us, then we should get it. We should get a notarized deed of gift, and then it, and then it belongs to the archive. <coughs> so tradition A is about non-professionalism, and uh, says that. Alcoholics Anonymous should remain forever non-professional, but our service centers may employ special workers. And in the long form of the tradition, it says we define professionalism as the occupation of counseling alcoholics for fees or higher. So I was wondering about this, and I consider myself an amateur, and I was thinking as an amateur archivist, uh, do we do it for the love of archives and our love of AA? My answer is yes. But as amateur archivists, are we and should we always be professional in our service work? And again, I think the answer is yes. Tradition 9. A is such I'd never be organized. But we may create service boards or committees directly responsible to those they serve. And this is all about the spirit of service, which I learned right away when I came in. I believe many of us whoop, whoop, have uh, been coffee makers there, and some of us in this room have had the uh, have had the uh, uh, the honor and the privilege of uh, serving as delegates or even trustees at that level of service. 
But somebody told me a long time ago, the highest we can get in Alcoholics Anonymous is trusted servant. In the long form of the tradition, it says all such representatives are to be guided in the spirit of service, or true leaders in AA are the trusted and experienced servants of the whole. So I thought about this one, and I thought, are we guided by the spirit of service in our archival positions? Are we trusted and experienced servants? I think that's why we come here. Tradition 10. I love this one. Alcoholics, Alcoholics Anonymous has no opinion on outside issues. Hence the AA name will never be drawn into public controversy. And so we got a little cartoon guy here, and he's uh, talking about how he's uh, maintained his sobriety for 10 years, and now he's going to start speaking for AA. And he's starting to talk about outside issues, and he's going to send a telegram. And the next thing you know, that just starts, starts uh, causing controversy and chaos. And what ultimately happens is the newcomer walks away saying, how can anybody stay sober and out there like that? So, do we strive to avoid outside issues in our archival work? Are we always in the middle of it? I don't know. Tradition 11. It's about anonymity. That's why I didn't introduce one of the reasons I didn't introduce my last name when we're being recorded here today. And it says our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. We need always maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio, and film. And of course, we don't want anybody to be a messiah for AA and get in front of the camera and start preaching. But we're not a secret society either. The, the long form of the tradition talks about the attraction rather than the promotion. And I was always one of these people who always thought, you know, unfortunately, Alcoholics Anonymous uh, is a program not for everybody. It's for people who want it, not necessarily for those that need it. Um, and I love what Dr. Bob said here. Uh, and uh, he says, by giving your name at the public, he says, there's two ways to break the anonymity tradition. By giving your name at the public level of press radio, or by being so anonymous that you can't be reached by other AA members. And that's why I use my last name whenever I'm in a meeting. I want you to know who I am. So the questions I came up with here, are we able to attract others by our enthusiasm to join us in our archival service work? And, uh, that was something that was preached by some people that got me involved in it. And service work in general was that we have to pass this on by our enthusiasm. I think that's what probably attracts people to ask us to be sponsors is they see our enthusiasm and our love for our thoughts and honest. Are we careful not to break the anonymity of our members, both living and deceased? And it was mentioned earlier about posthumous anonymity. Um, we had a, uh, a long time member of Alcoholics Anonymous last year pass in, uh, in Tampa, and uh, his family or somebody decided to put his full picture of his whole story on the front page of the Tampa Bay Times. It wasn't him, although the man was not very anonymous because he was a circuit speaker. Um, it, it was not him that put his last name out there. So tradition 12, and this kind of wraps it all up, is that anonymity is a spiritual foundation of all our traditions and a reminder us to place principles before personalities. Once again, Sacrifice equals humility. When we choose the path of selfishness, greed, and pride, we are refusing to accept God's spirit. When we choose the path of love and service, we accept God's spirit that flows into us. This we owe to AA future, to place our common welfare first, to keep our fellowship united, for on AA unity depends our lives and the lives of those to come. Thank you. We're open for questions now.